turn our focus now to short selling opportunities in this market. And my next guest has identified stocks he says are going to be in long term decay. Jeff Middlesward is president and director of research at Behind the Numbers and an independent research firm that specializes in reading between the lines of company financials for institutional investors as well as hedge funds. And he joins us now live from Dallas. Jeff, as always, good to have you on the show. Um, so Thanks, why Lisa. don't you tell us a little bit about your picks? But you know what? Before we get there, let's just talk about how resilient U.S. stock investors seem to be. Have you been somewhat surprised, at least by the first quarter of 2011? It's been uh, it's been somewhat surprising given that you know numbers have not been completely out of uh, out of line on the upside and they've still taken the stocks up. Um, you know, I, I look at it a lot with uh, uh, you know Europe is still in flames. You've still got Africa stuff. You've got oil at 108. Uh, you've got the Fed printing money. Uh, housing is still coming down, and yet the markets are back above where they were before all that stuff started. So that in and of itself is a little strange. But uh, um, you know, the market is made up of buyers and sellers. So. Uh, Sometimes the buyers win, sometimes the sellers win. All right. Well, let's talk about some of your ideas that you think are going to be winners. A lot of these based on the notion of long-term decay. And I found this one to be interesting. You mentioned it the last time you were on the show, Corrections Corporation of America. Right. Uh, what we like to look for is stuff where, you know, it was a growth story and the market is still viewing it as a growth story. And uh, but in our case, in our view, it's basically broken. And in the case of Corrections Corp and the Geo Group, these are private prisons. And the bull case is really simple, that they've spent years uh, making money by having states outsource prisoners to them. And the states get a small discount on that. And therefore, they've grown rates per day on prisoners. They've seen prison populations go up. And, um, and they've expanded the number of beds they have. What's happened recently is the states are not just uh, looking for ways to save money, the states are broke. And we've come to the conclusion that it's a lot cheaper to just not put somebody in jail to begin with. So you're debating whether or not it costs 50 grand to put somebody in jail or 45 if you put it at Corrections Corp versus zero if you don't put them in jail. And what you're seeing now is a situation where all these states are basically saying, let's go to shorter sentences, let's rethink mandatory sentencing, let's go to probation, let's go to uh, 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 early parole, let's go to fines. And the prison population has gone down the last couple of years. Uh, the, the amount of crime has gone down since 06. Uh, state, half the states cut their prison spending last year. So when we look at all these type of numbers building up, uh, and then we look back at Corrections Corp and GEO, you know, we're seeing companies that are already reporting flat to down occupancies, companies you know, that are not seeing growth in, in per day uh, uh, inmate, inmate revenues, and this is just going to keep coming. Jeff, when you talk about long-term decay, let's just talk about the time frame in which you look at these companies, because Corrections Corp over the last year, up 22%, it's one year total return. GEO Group, same story there, they've actually done better, up 34% mm -hmm. on a total return basis in the last year. How how long does it take for your thesis to play out for any particular company? Uh, in some cases, you know, it, it'll take a little longer than others. Um, we try to focus on companies that do have some debt and companies that uh, uh, you know, have a few extra catalysts as well. So in the case of these, you know, th these are probably more like two and three year declines before people really catch on. Uh, you know, Eastman Kodak didn't disappear overnight, uh, even though uh, everybody was running around with a digital camera. Uh, it was pretty obvious that film was not going to be needed to nearly the same degree. But, uh, you know, Eastman Kodak's been in decay for five or six years. Right. It took, so a, it took this a while is sort of the for, same type of deal. Took a while for the market to completely digest us, but well, brings us to your next pick, which I think is an interesting one mm -hmm. and one makes one that makes sense to me. Are our Donnelly and Sons? Oh, I think the we just largest printer. Oh, you went black there for a moment, Jeff, as you collected oh, okay. your Sorry. thoughts. A little technical okay. glitch. Talk to me about R. R. Donnelly. Yeah, R. R. Donnelly is, is the world's largest printer, and they've been rolling up uh, a lot of other printing businesses. They bought Bound recently. Uh, they've bought other, you know, textbook publishing, uh, magazine publishing companies, that type of thing. And you know, everyone's aware of the fact that the Kindle exists, and that you know, 10Ks and annual reports are online these days. And so the volume of printing is going down, and it's going down at an accelerating rate. Uh, even Donnelly 
talks about how uh, you know, they expect to continue to lose volume and they're going to make it up by buying more companies. They expect to see pricing come down. Uh, there's industry groups that have basically said that the volume of printing is, is going to go back to 1965 levels. And so when we look at Donnelly, we're seeing a company that's made $4 billion in acquisitions over the last five years. Uh, they've already taken almost $3 billion in write-offs, so they've leveraged the balance sheet. Their pension plan is underfunded. That's, gotten to be, that's become a worse situation. And cash flow is lower today than when they started all this. And that erosion just keeps happening. And when we look at it, the reason people like this company is it has a high dividend. And when we look at what the stock has been doing and the, uh, and the company's been doing, not only is cash flow lower, they've already cut capital spending. They've already stopped boosting the dividend. That was about three, five years ago. They've already, um, uh, you have to deal with higher cash needs for their pension plan. And they've stopped repurchasing shares. And that's where a lot of the growth used to come from for this company. The only thing left that I'm looking at is the dividend here. And as it erodes, the dividend can jump from being 40% of free cash flow to something more like 60 or 65%, which in my mind puts it in jeopardy and makes this sort of a long-term decline story. All without right. the dividend, no one's going to own the stock. Jeff, we're going to, unfortunately, we're going to have to leave it there. I could talk to you all day. You always have some interesting ideas today. We talked about R.R. Donnelly and two prison companies. Jeff Middlesworth, thanks so much for joining us. He's the president and director of research at Behind the Numbers. Some interesting short-selling picks there.